Fellas, I'm getting a little bit emotional here. I'll do it again. Three. <coughs> Whoa, two. this is the first time John Hanks ever f***ed up. Holy Just f keep it in there. I am emotional because this is our last watch list of 2017. Good to have you with us. The watch list for UFC 219. Cyborg versus Holm coming up December 30th. As usual, the MMA leader closing out the year at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. And of course, we start with the women on the marquee. Holly Holm trying to become a two-division UFC champion. Sixth consecutive five-round fight for Holly Holm against the champion Chris Cyborg, who makes her first defense. Yeah, I mean, how can you not be excited about this? Oh. This is obviously Cyborg's greatest test, biggest test uh, to date, I would say. And stylistically, it's so interesting because obviously Cyborg is incredibly aggressive. She comes out wanting to take uh, her opponent's head off. And Holly is an expert at, at avoiding that, you right. know, and counterpunching and her boxing pedigree and, and, uh, and her own power, her kicks. And uh, it's going to be interesting. And I think even size-wise, yeah. Holly is uh, comparable. You know what I mean? Yeah. She cuts a lot of weight, obviously, to get mm -hmm. to 135. And so it's going to be interesting to see how she looks at 145. She may, she may feel better. Yeah. Uh, you know? And so it's going to be a great fight. I'm excited about it. And if social media is any indication, Holly Holm has certainly added some muscle mass and at least frame to frame, one of the few fighters that, that can match Chris Cyborg in this featherweight division. That brings us to Khabib Nurmagomedov. 24 have tried, 24 have failed. He just hasn't been all that active. He returns here against Edson Barboza in a huge fight, obviously, Sean, at 155 pounds. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm extremely excited about, about this fight. And if there was ever the classic striker versus grappler, this is it, man. Ooh. There aren't too many guys in this world that can get up off their back against Khabib. And there aren't there are hardly anybody in the sport that can stand and, and take Barboza leg kicks. Right. You know, um, it's just an absolutely intriguing fight for me who will impose their will. They're perennial top contenders. No, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this bout. Barboza's got a lot of momentum. He's won three in a row. 13 UFC wins already for Edson. He's coming off that flying knee knockout of Benil Dariush back in March. And of course for Khabib, he returns for the first time in more than a year when he got past Michael Johnson. That was November of 2016. All right, so how about Jimmy Rivera? He goes from one and one in his career to 21 and one. He's won 20 consecutive fights, but instead of getting the Dominic Cruz fight here, it'll be the short notice replacement John Lineker. Huge fight here, of course, at 135 pounds. Yeah, you know, I go on and on about how, uh, how records like that are just so fleeting, astounding, and difficult to accomplish in the right. sport. And winning, what is it, 20 in a row right. now, that's an insane statistic, you know, to do that. And, and he's fighting top-level competition uh, ever since he got to the UFC. And then you have Lineker. He's like a grenade in there. It takes about a minute and a half and you pull the pin and then he just starts going, right? It's just an insane thing. He's going to hit this one, the ground running on this one and just come out of the gate swinging. Um, and as Styles make fights, these are two guys that just throw heaters. Left hand, right hand, it doesn't matter. Um, I just, for me, whose chin is better yeah. in this fight? It's a great matchup against two top contenders. If Rivera can get past Lineker, because this fight's a very relevant fight, right? He was, oh, yeah. he was gonna fight Dominic Cruz, completely different style matchup. Um, this might even be a more fan-friendly fight. Right. And getting by Lineker um, it just gets him that much closer. They're so closely ranked. Yeah you know, to, to a title fight. Of course, for Lineker, he's oh. won seven of eight, only loss in there on points to TJ Dillashaw, the current yeah. champion. From being out wrestled, yes. not from right. being out struck, right. right? Nobody's been in there and has been able to stand there and, yeah. and trade with him. All right, let's get to another fight here. And this one kind of jumps off the card for me. It's flying under the radar given the depth on this UFC 219 pay-per-view main card. But Cynthia Calvillo, all the rage at strawweight, 6-0 overall, 3-0 in the UFC. And now, I think without question, her toughest test to date against the former champion, Carla Espar. Well, without question. I mean, all, Cynthia's come out of the gate, you know, gangbusters. You know, she's hit the division by storm, like you mentioned. And, and, and Carla's a former champion. Um, so this is definitely going to be her stiffest test to date. Um, Cynthia is just so, I mean, she's so athletic and fast and furious and it's going to see how, I, my guess is Kyle is going to try to subdue that, try to yeah. uh, use her wrestling and, and try to slow her down a little bit because once again Cynthia just comes out and she's, she's, she's gangbusters. Yeah. You know? So uh, it's going to be a great test. We really will see where she's at after this fight. Yeah, I think it's a perfect fight and I'm not just saying that because you're sitting right here but for Carla Sparza, you know, big win for her against Marina Moroz back in June. and. 
Calvillo just has that nasty streak, which, which I think you just really uh, have to appreciate as a fight fan. All right, finally, guys, Carlos Condit. So the forgotten man somewhat at 170 pounds. He's been idle since that main event against Damian Maya. That was August of 2016. Now he draws Neil Magny, who, who last fought in September against Rafael Dos Anjos. Yeah, and I don't even know if you want to call him the, the forgotten man because the fan response yeah. to his return has been astounding. It's actually surprising to me. He's had this long layoff, but he's jumping back in there against a super relevant, tough guy. He's not, there's no cupcakes right, in, right. in his return here. And to me, that's the most intriguing thing. Oh, you just, you just have no idea, you know, is the, is the old Carlos gonna, gonna show mm -hmm. up and uh, like he didn't miss a beat. But you know if he gets the win, you, you know it's very relevant and he's back in the top 10, he's back in title contention. I mean, he's still there in the rankings, but you know, for all intents and purposes, very relevant against very relevant competition. And for Magny, you know, beating Carlos Condit is a massive feather in your cap. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and Magny's been super active in fighting all the relevant fighters as well. So it's just an intriguing matchup to see which Great. Carlos shows up, you know. And I don't know what your internal metrics say, but I feel like Carlos Condit is one of the five most popular fighters on this entire roster. Oh. I mean, it's not just the natural born killer nickname either. There's something about him yeah. that's just different yeah. and people gravitate towards. Yeah. You know, he's got that, he's always had that it factor. Not a guy I would cross in a back alley necessarily. He's the nicest guy ever, I, I would. I know. He's yeah. like, you know, he's the last guy you want to take to a bar fight with. He'd probably talk everybody down and yeah, there would be no fight. Right. But Well, now that you got the beard going, you look a little bit more intimidating. So do you like that? Maybe I would take you on points over on it in the back alley. All right, that's it for the watch list for UFC 219. We will be back with a new version for you in advance of UFC 220, that massive pay-per-view coming up from the Bean, Boston, Massachusetts in January. Until then, for Sean Shelby and Mick Maynard, I'm John Anik. Enjoy UFC 219. We'll talk to you soon.